Hello everyone, I wanted to quickly show you how powerful Infinite Unify can be for newborns. We all know that newborns can be very cute, but however, they do possess a lot of uh, issues regards to redness in the skin and all kinds of saturation and color issues. This is where I think Unify really does shine the brightest light. And for example, we have this beautiful image by Susanna Gallardo, who was gracious enough to provide this image for us to use to show you. Um, and obviously I haven't really done any retouching just yet because I just wanted to give you an idea of how this works. One issue that I see often that happens with newborns is very common where you have a lot of saturated red um, across the skin. You might have different color variations in the shadows and things like that. And I wanted to show you how to kind of go about and fix that really quickly actually. First thing that we are going to do and before I mention anything is if you haven't used Infinite Unify before and you want to really know about all the settings and tools, simply go to infinite-tools.com where you could see a video on the Unify page about how to use pretty much all the functions here in case you want to know about the specifics. So now let's get started. What we are actually going to do here is first I'm going to select my lasso tool. And I love using the lasso tool because I can identify exactly the range of tones I kind of want uh, Unify to use and to even out the rest of the skin. I actually look around the image and decide what I don't want to use first. So number one, that's going to be the feet and the fingers because uh, naturally they're always very red. Um, but I noticed that the leg area for newborns especially typically does a very good job. Um, the forehead's also quite nice. I like that tone. So you do want to pick something that represents the rest of your image. Let's go ahead and actually use the tones on the leg because I think that's a really nice pleasing image like that. And you can also hold shift and then select any other tones that you like across the image, which is nice. Maybe even selecting maybe some of the forehead if you want to, just to give a really good idea of what I'm going for here. You don't have to do that, but it's an option. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create. And I noticed that before I hit create, I had my uh, mask on. And what this does is adds a black mask to my gradient map. And then secondly, I had it set to the color blend mode, which you can change at any time. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. You simply click on it. And then you'll notice that the blend mode changes to hue. And you might be wondering what's the biggest difference between hue and color. And that's what I'm going to talk about next as well. So first, let's go ahead and keep hue as the main blending option and blending mode. If you do not see your gradient map here, simply go to Window and Properties. And there you'll actually see the options of the colors that the gradient map selected here. Then you can click on it and also see you know, the different tones it picks and all that kind of good stuff. And You'll notice that over here, I have my smoothness set to 50. And that's basically how specific the colors that uh, Unify samples. Um, and 50, I think, is a very good number, generally speaking. So I'm going to I'll just leave that there for now. And I picked five points that the gradient map picks. And I'm just going to keep that as is, too. And if you don't have those, just quickly go ahead and select those. And it automatically will update without you doing anything else. It's really, really easy. Next, I'll go ahead and click on the mask itself. Um, go ahead and use my brush tool now that I have my selection done. Then I just want to make sure that my flow is set to about 10% or so right now. And my brush tool, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my hardness is set to zero and my opacity as 100. And that's it. Then we're ready to go. And I'm going to make a larger brush here and then just simply start brushing. And if you don't see much happening, you also want to make sure that right now my opacity, I'm going to make it to 100 for now, just so I can see everything coming through. And I, I can change that later as well if I decide that it might be too much. But I like using this setup here for this image because it really does bring it in nice and gradually. And I can decide how much I want, where I want, and I don't have to apply it to the entire image, which is nice. I like that. So there you go. Let me go ahead and also brush here on the top and the arm and a little bit on the cheek and the shoulder. And I think that looks really, really nice. I think this is kind of starting to shape up. Let me go and zoom out here for a second. We'll turn this on and off. And you can see automatically the redness really, really goes away uh, wherever we start brushing. And I think this is really handy because I, I really like the way that, you know, the blood flow was. It's, it's a nice that there's some saturated areas on the feet and a little bit less in different places. It makes it look human, you know. That's really important to keep in mind. You want to make sure that your image looks human. And the reason why we used hue over color, for example, is because if you actually change the blend mode to color, 
you'll notice that it really does end up saturating perhaps too much of the image, or it makes everything one level of saturation. And this is okay. Like if I drop it down to say like 34%, it would make things more harmonious and some of the red might show through, which is fine. It does a pretty good job and I think it looks acceptable. And when you use a color blend mode, you want to make sure that your opacity is at around 35%, okay? But what you'll notice is that there's still redness showing through. And I don't want that. I want the color, the tone of the skin to be quite even like that, maybe a little bit less. And I want the original saturation of the legs to show through or the feet. Because in hue mode, what happens is it shifts it from red to this nice, like even skin tone, but it keeps the original saturation of whatever the feet was. For example, you see it's quite saturated. If I turn this on, it keeps that saturation. So it identifies that it looks realistic. I think that looks really nice. So for me, I think for this particular image, I'm going to keep the blend mode to hue, keep the opacity around 60, and I think that's pretty much it. And that looks really, really natural. Again, color blend mode changes the saturation of everything it paints to whatever the saturation is of these colors. And you don't really want that all the time. So for this instance, hue works really well because it keeps original saturation of the skin while just shifting the tones of red to closer to whatever it is that you paint. And there we go. So that's it. Aside from that and some retouching, maybe some brightening and darkening, I think it looks really, really great. Again, if you are interested in learning more about the program and the um, tools and features, just go over to infinite-tools.com under Infinite Unify, where we'll also go ahead and show you some of the other videos that we have on different genres and different problem areas. So if you're not sure about how to use it and you want some more examples, just go over to the website and you can see it all there.